Hi everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal, and the word for today is reality. Well, hi everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal, and I was asked by one of the viewers to talk about a problem that she has. She's in a situation, she's an adult in her 30s, but she lives at home in a, um, not in North America or Canada, she's in a third world country. And she lives with her parents because of some medical conditions that she has. Let's put it that way. And what she wanted help with What does she do about a mother who does not respect her personal space? For example, she was telling me that she was in her bedroom and the mother walked in without knocking and then just started to clean up uh, in the room. without any sort of prior warning or anything else like that. And then it was also mentioned that the mom has a wardrobe in that room, and so she comes in and out without knocking um, to get clothes out of that wardrobe. And so the viewers said to me, you know, what do I do? Well, it's a catch-22. In other words, it is difficult and the reason it is difficult is because it's not the daughter's house it's the mother and father's house I know it's the family home but even so it's still their home and therefore unless the family has agreed that this room is her room and nobody goes into it um, without knocking or asking permission, uh, that really she doesn't have a leg to stand on. So, what I think and I, I'm certain some of the viewers who are adult and maybe live at home will also um, have some input on this one. The number one thing I would say is that normally if you have an adult, adult child living at home, their room is their room if they pay rent for the room. And I guess that's something I don't know. Does the viewer pay rent to live in that room? And if so, then I do believe that she has some privacy expectation. If she lives rent-free, I don't think she has any privacy expectation other than decency. I mean, I think a lot of us would say, well, of course, I wouldn't go into anybody's room without knocking. Different culture, different country, different rules. So it's very obvious, and it has been a number of, for a number of weeks and months, very obvious that the parents still treat this child, unquote, as a child rather than as an adult. And I'm not sure you get to change that when they've been doing it for over 30 years. Now, there is always a joke is you will always be the child of your parents, right? They will always see you, for the most part, as their child. They won't see you as an adult unless you keep reminding them. I did that a lot with my mom. <laughs> she would do things and i go, you really are talking to me like a five-year-old and I just need to tell you I'm an adult now. <laughs> I know you might have missed the, that transition and you may think I act like a five-year-old, but I'm really an adult now. <laughs> 
Um, but you know, it used to be, I used to do it with a lot of humor, but she sort of went, right. Um, because there, no doubt about it, um, parents forget that the children have grown up. However, again and again, I say, if you're living in somebody else's house, for the most part, you live by their rules. Now, I had somebody who was living in my house for about a year and paid rent for the room. I wouldn't dream of going in that room without permission. And I wouldn't dream of going into that room without knocking, even though they paid rent. And particularly because they paid rent. So, you know, that I think would be my question is, are you paying rent, viewer? And if you are, it gives you a little bit more um, ammunition, if you like, than if you're living rent free because of your um, medical situation. So what do you do about this in the long term is the next question. I, quite honestly, you can keep discussing it um, and, and just go, you know, is it possible that we can come to an agreement where if you want to come into the room that you knock first, you know, it's you know, quite a polite thing to do. <laughs> um, the one thing I heard in the story was that the viewer lost control and swore at the mother about something. Now that's a loss of control and that's not something that I would think was a good idea. And the viewer also knows it wasn't a good idea. Um, but you know, as long as the viewer understands that you cannot blame the mother for the fact you lost control. You can't say, yes, well, the reason I lost control was because of what she was doing. No, the reason you lost control is because you didn't keep control of your emotions. Don't, don't blame the mother for this. Even though I totally agree with you that what the mother did, you know, really triggered you and, and got you upset, you are still responsible for your behavior. It doesn't matter what somebody else does, you are responsible for your behavior. You can't go blaming everybody. That's what a kid does. That's what a child does. It's not what an adult does. It took me a long time to learn that, by the way, viewer, just so you know. I used to blame people for things all the time until I got a bit of more courage and character. And now I realize, you know, what I do is my business. And, you know, I'm responsible for it, not somebody else. Okay, so I'm sorry I don't have the perfect answer for you, viewer. And maybe some of the other viewers will have some recommendations. Bottom line, their house, their rules. That's the bottom line of it. But if you can do it without getting upset and calling people names and being um, ill-tempered and nasty, you know, you just want to go, hey, mom, do you think it's possible that when you want to come into the room, you at least, you know, are decent enough to just knock first? I, I would really appreciate that. Do you think you could do that? And if she just goes... Um, off, you know, the deep end at you because of that, then that's her problem, not yours. You do it politely, her reaction is her problem, not yours. And if she does get really angry and go, you don't have the right to tell me what to do, da, 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 you just go, Mom, it was a simple request and it was about common decency. And it's about, if you want to come into my room, could you please knock first? I do not mean any disrespect any more than I imagine that you mean disrespect to me. That's why I'm trying to talk about it nicely. 
don't get upset. If you get upset, it ends up with you being rude and then you've lost any chance of being able to negotiate this. And by the way, you mentioned that when you were rude to your mom, your dad came and, and you know, let you know what he thought about that. Totally understand that. I totally I totally understand that your daddy did that quite normal for him to protect your mother and you were rude and he came down to tell you that you didn't like it but you were rude to your mother deep breath you can do this it's all part of growing up. And, and I'm really proud of, of the incredible um, strides that you have taken to do that. Keep up the good work. And by the way, thank you for letting me tell your story because, again, there are other people who will learn from this and also, you know, be helped by it. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, hey, we all have difficult parents at times. Well, maybe most of us anyway. And, you know, these are all little reminders about if we allow our parents to treat us like children, then they will. Um, but you don't have to be rude about it. As I said, I used to laugh. <laughs> you know, oh, you know, Mom, <laughs> don't know if you noticed, but I grew up. And she goes, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> this is dear mama stop saying look after one another be kind to one another it's okay to have your point of view you don't have to be rude to have it bye bye for now